The internet is a pretty wonderful place. It's a vast wasteland of knowledge, information, and people who are interested in the same depraved content you find yourself lacking. You may be an average Greek mythology enjoyer looking for someone who shares that same love for Asterius's fucking milkers. All you really have to do is put that out there, and your kind will be flocking together in no time at all. This is arguably one of the main appeals to the World Wide Web. Being able to find like-minded people and essentially a few social media scrolls. But as great as that sounds, that also leaves the possibility of people coming together with interests that range from thinking getting off to children is okay, thinking fully produced videos of cub rape is okay, as well as how Fido was completely consenting to literally being torn a new one. Chances are if you use Twitter, you've no doubt run into or heard of these people. Some may find them on other social media platforms, but we'll say Twitter because here, it's almost impossible not to hear about these degenerates. For this video, we'll use Zoophiles as an example. The reason Twitter users hear about Zoophiles so often isn't because of the multiple callout posts spawning on these people every other minute, it's because Zoophiles are essentially outing themselves. Technically. They say how they aren't afraid of announcing their dog screwers while making attempts to burrow into the LGBT community, but that coming out falls in rather deaf ears as that zoo pride is hidden behind faceless personas and voice modification. I could come out as asexual to my subscribers, but if my presence was just doing this online every month, do you think anyone would really care about that? But of course, that would be assuming zoophilia is an actual sexuality, which, let me be honest here. The comparison of gay, lesbian, or bisexual couples to that of a human screwing an animal? The thought alone should come bundled with some form of assistance. Therapy, a firearm, anything really. Back to what I was saying, zoophiles rarely out themselves, as it allows them to spout their dog fornicating intentions without risk of it affecting their real lives. An example of this spectrum would be the two hosts of the zoophile podcast, Zooier Than Thou. Douglas Spink, or Fosty, didn't have any intentions on hiding his identity. His full story of drug smuggling, dog abuse, and vastly uncovered mice is all out in the open for anyone to read. And hell, if you're too lazy to read it, you could pretty much just watch Tom McKinley's videos on them. He does a pretty good job at covering them. And as for the other hosts, if their use of voice modulation is anything to go off of, Tuckle the Rat is proud to boast about his self-administered scarlet letter online while keeping his real identity private. Almost as if there's some consequence to saying they want to screw an animal off internet, both times I covered their podcast specifically, there wasn't really any backstory or information to gather on Toggle other than his tweets and what he said on the podcast. Well, at least until now. As some are aware, a few lovely folks over at Kiwi Farms were gracious enough to unmask and reveal the man behind such quotes as, You got a big mouth, you don't know when to quit, do you eat a lot of so, who is the man behind the rat? Well, a man by the name of Charles Alexander Barry. However, this may not be his current name, so for this video, we'll be referring to them as their more recent name, Buck Daniel Riley. So, who is he exactly? As previously said, Buck is an open zoophile that hosts Zooier Than Thou, a podcast condoning relations with humans and animals, sexual or otherwise. He was previously the co-host to notorious dog screwer and cocaine smuggler Douglas Spink. Toggle would end up taking control of the podcast after Spink's demise at the hands of butt cancer. Regardless of the podcast getting kicked off YouTube for what is clearly against the site's TOS, it was remade a total of 2.22 times, as well as the release of their call to action, Operation Zootube. Essentially, they plan to use their willingly degenerative audience to spam their podcast content across multiple YouTube channels so their content would never truly leave the site. Apart from this, Tuckley uses this soapbox of his to, among other depraved things, attempt to push zoophilia as a legitimate sexuality that should be included in the LGBT. And for those who might not have heard me the first time, the gays, the lesbians, nor the bi's want anything to do with animal rapists. Along with being a zoophile, Tuggle dons a gay as his real sexuality, married to Trevor Rush. While Trevor supposedly isn't a zoophile himself, he's fully aware of Buck's dog diddling habits and doesn't seem to show any signs of disapproval. That sounds about right for a BDSM coach. Whatever that even is. But we're not dealing with his husband right now. At least not this video. So let's get back on track as to how Buck's anonymity unraveled. The start of this unmasking campaign sparked when Toggle will post a photo of a rodent meeting he attended 
at 2019 Midwest Fur Fest. While Toggle did post selfies of himself at this event, these photos were usually censored with a large, admittedly irritating, cartoon mouse face. It's just, it just looks so punchable, you know? But anyway, while he did censor his face, he did give off a few features to work with. Things such as his clothing, the glasses hanging off of his shirt, his skin tone, and his neck beard. So, people started to go through photos taken at this rodent room party, looking for any connection to the fursuiters with him or a picture of a maskless man who fit Toggle's description. Just so happens they stumbled upon the latter. A picture from a fur named Fink Rat would show a man on the right who caught the attention of the internet sleuths. The similarities between Toggle's censored photos and this amounted almost instantly. From the patchy facial hair, to the gray sweater, to the glasses that were hanging off his shirt, now being on his face. So that gave a possible face to the zoo file, at least until another user confirmed it to be him. They came across the Twitter account for a band by the name of Exit Mouse. On the account was a video of their lead singer doing a vocal warm up. This is the Migi Monkey exercise. Migi. On this note. Ready? Here we have the same person from the Rodent Room photo in a 51 second video. More than enough time to put two and two together and realize that here is the face of a man who unapologetically rallies for the abuse of animals behind the flimsy guise of cross species relationships. However, in case you needed a bit more proof, let's turn our attention to the band name, Exit Mouse. Exit Mouse is a reference to an in-game item from Earthbound, a game Toggle seems to show a rather avid interest in. But you wouldn't have had to know this piece of information, since both accounts decided to use the same text font in their Twitter names. Toggle's horrid rat avatar also holds a microphone which could hint at his interest in singing and music, if Cry Harder didn't already do that for you. This red avatar was also made using a character customization application called Hero Forge, being posted on his account right around the same time the Exit Mouse page did something similar. As people continued to dig through the Exit Mouse page, a user would notice a microphone in the back of a video. Curious, he would send a message Toggle's way asking what kind of mics would be good for starting up his own podcast. Toggle would recommend the same mic shown in that video. Or perhaps you want to shrug that one off as a coincidence as well. A bunch of coincidences like that don't really mean much, right? Well, another one you can add to the pile is Toggle tweeting a pic of a rat face mask. Not too long after, Exit Mouse will post a picture of himself wearing a face mask of the exact same style. So that would be six separate coincidences that tie the two accounts together. Pretty much setting in stone that this right here is the face of a zoo file. In 2017, Exit Mouse will post on their Facebook that they were changing their band name, the previous being Husky in Denial. Well, under this older band name, Toggle would go by the alias Smooch This Pooch. This is shown by the Exit Mouse Twitter linking to his personal account in the bio, as well as Smooch saying that he's the front man for Exit Mouse. With this new user handle, users were able to find pictures that the account had been tagged in, one with him at Midwest Fur Fest in 2017, as well as one alongside his husband, Tempest Panda. This is where users came across Toggle's name, Buck Riley. The abandoned fur affinity page for the band Husky in Denial was named Buck, showing Tempest Panda as his husband. It also linked to its old Tumblr account where his name would be confirmed. The confirmation came in an image post where Buck doxed himself. The more I read into this, the more I start to question if Tuggle himself even knew that people would piece this together. Or did he just have the same amount of faith in humanity I did after hearing about zoo files? Either way, he just gave away his name and presumably old address. Although, users did get a better idea of where he could be after his husband Trevor complained about a Grubhub order on Twitter. The fury of not getting the food he ordered blinded him from seeing how poorly he crossed out his delivery address. This allowed people on Twitter to confirm his address, doing so with a post from Trevor's Facebook. The post talked about a stray dog that had been dumped on their property. Fortunately, they were just looking to find a new home for them. Toggle also spoke about this on his Twitter, his concerns falling on the fact that Trevor kept referring to the dog as it, as well as being worried that someone was going to cut the dog's balls off. The rant also shows the fact that Trevor is aware of Buck's dog scoring tendencies. As they went further with the address, they would come across a phone number that matched that of Buck's telegram. But to tie this all back to Exit Mouse, Buck would also post about it to his personal Facebook. 
Kiwi Farms had first suspected the images of Buck being toggled around January when they came across the photo of Buck at the rodent meet. Two days later, a friend of Toggle would post this and essentially confirm their suspicions from the get-go. Getting back to Buck, he and his husband still own at least one dog. Here we have an image of when they first got in the pups, another of one dog grown, and Toggle recently talking about dog diddling where he tries to justify wanking his dog. A full recollection that I honestly didn't need to read, but I mean it did help to have a face to tie it to. And chances are, if you've heard of Toggle before seeing this video, chances are you're already aware of him being a furry zoophile. So chances are you wouldn't be surprised to hear that Buck defends cub porn. Although, just seeing any zoophile would probably give you that impression. Stare at one long enough and you just might get flooded with the pedo material. I mean, I made a sock puppet out of curiosity just to see what zoophiles were up to on Twitter. And for those playing to do the same thing, I'd advise against it. It's all just animal wings and cub porn and their little echo chamber. It, it's not worth it. Anyway, even with Tuckle making attempts to hide behind his supposed anonymity, it turned out he was just extremely bad at it. Because of another alias of his being found, Clunky Monk. This one was found due to the Husky in Denial and Clunky Monk Twitters both being tagged in the same message asking for troubleshooting with a technical issue. This connection was put together from the Husky in Denial Tumblr and Clunky Monk Fur Affinity accounts both using the same wording in a post that he and Tempest were looking for a roommate. This clunky monk name was actually what led to the unmasking in the first place. The name Buck using at the rodent room being Clunk Russell. This would lead to his F list being discovered. And what do you know? Zoophilia down right there in the fave column. Along with age play. Age differences. Grandfather grandson. Underage characters. The fact is character is 12 years old. However, this account was created 9 years ago. So it's very possible that Bug made this account when he was underage himself. Before making the last update 7 years later and the last login being in 2020. When he was of age and had ample time to think about what he was doing. Instead, chances are he just used this as an escape to try and get away from whatever he was dealing with in reality. This is an assumption, but if the backstory of his character contains siblings encouraging his sexual curiosity, as well as a story on Ink Bunny where Clunk meets his father and... Well, it's Ink Bunny. I'm sure you can fill in the caps. With Buck defending not safe for work cub art later down the line of this, regardless of how you feel about cartoon drawings and immortal lolly crap, but you have to admit that the multiple red flags on this guy are at least very suspicious. So to end this off, Buck Daniel Riley, Charles Xander Barry, Toggle, whatever you, whatever alias you know him by, is a man who not too many of us knew anything about. Only that he was a disgrace to rat personas everywhere, advocating for the molestation of animals with a failed drug smuggler turned serial animal violator. However, the internet has gone to show once again that one slip up is all it takes for everything to come crumbling down in a pile of smoke. For those wanting to read through the Kiwi Farm thread themselves, the link will be in the description below. For now, be sure to leave your thoughts on this guy in the comments below. Like, sub, all that usual YouTube crap, and I will see you next video. Stay safe out there. We got a number one victory royale, yeah, Fortnite, we bout to get down. get down. Ten kills on the board right now, just wiped out tomato cow. My friend just gone down, I revived him, now we're heading southbound. Now we're in the pleasant park streets, look at the map, go to the mark sheet.